Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to JBDC's Virtual Biz Zone. Uh, well, we have a very exciting episode in in um, lined up for you today, and I just want to give you a special welcome for those who are returning and for those who are joining us for the very first time. And this session is facilitated by the JBDC's Technical Services Department, responsible for assisting clients with their product development needs from concept to market. And my name is Dania Bennett, your facilitator for today's session. So last week, we looked at developing your products for success. And this week, we will be delving a little bit more into the product side as we will be exploring the perfect to finish wire work and we have an extra special presenter because all of our presenters are special but we have an extra special presenter today and he is Mr. Alo Lopman Omotoya Omotoya <laughs> And he is a Nigerian artist and volunteer cultural diplomat to Jamaica. He holds a bachelor degree in painting from the University of Lagos and a master of fine arts printmaking from the University of Benin. He is currently pursuing his PhD from the same university and he was awarded student with leadership qualities in 2008 at the University of Lagos Endowment Scholarship Awards. Forum that was in 2008, and two times first best faculty of arts researcher at the University of Lagos annual research conference and fair in 2016 and 2017. He has acted as curator for the University of Benin's second eminent lecture series, Culture at Risk, in honor of Nobel laureate Professor Wole. Soyinka 2016. He has done numerous um, commission works and participated in several solo group exhibitions. He is a member of the Society of Nigerian Artists and a member of the Arts Council of the African Studies Association. He has worked with the Tourism Product Development Company and the Ministry of Tourism Jamaica in 2017 and 2018, respectively, and also the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports in 2019. Currently, he is with the Jamaica Business Development Corporation under the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Industry and Commerce. To add to his credit, he has facilitated numerous workshops and he is a multi-talented artist. He has done workshops pertaining to tie-dye batik, jewelry bead making, leather workshops, chasing and, and reposé, which is also a form of metal work and much more. So please help me to welcome our very special guest today, Mr. Alo Lockman. And I know he will be giving you some extra special information as to how you can make your artworks really phenomenal, phenomenal, sorry, and spectacular. So Alo, over to you. Also, before I turn right over to Alo, we will generally be facilitating questions at the end of his demonstration. But if you have a burning issue, pertaining to a technique or his demonstration, you can either type the question in the chat or click on the icon to raise your hand and we will facilitate you. But generally, for the more general questions, it will be after the presentation. So, hello, over to you. Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, to the correct again, my um, proper pronunciation of my name is Alao Lukmon Omotayo. That is the proper pronunciation of my name. And thank you very much. And today's program will be doing um, wire work. And wire work is, uh, is a very simple technique in which you can just uh, turn up some wire and do some jewelry, other uh, necklaces, or uh, any other things you can use to enhance uh, some of your products. And uh, I would, uh, some of the things I'll be using, and uh, let me show you a little sample of why I work from a book, which is a book, and, although it is a foreign book, and um, I bought it online, and you can see some very beautiful wire work. And some of the things that we'll be using to do the wire work, I'm going to introduce you to the materials first before we start. And what one of the major instruments we'll be using is called an um, calling gizmo, 
the calling gizmo, it is, um, it is an instrument which you can use to coil up wire, make decoration with wire, whether the um, earring, uh, necklace, and some other things you can use to enhance and your products. Now here again, we have other instruments and uh, these are the instruments inside the gizmo. These are the instruments inside the gizmo which we'll be using to coil the wire and have different sizes. And then this is another instrument that will hold the gizmo stuff in there. And here again, um, we have different pliers which we'll be using. Each of the pliers have their functions. One of the pliers is the, this plier, this is this cutting plier. We have the run nose plier. Let me, uh, let me show it again. This is a cutting plier. And also we have a run nose plier and uh, we have a nose plier. And also we have the curved nose plier. Each of the pliers have their function. And um, the wires we'll be using, though we have different wires that we use for this kind of um, for the kind of jewelry, but this one will be using the normal copper wire, which we can get anywhere where uh, maybe um, hardware store. You can get all these um, copper wire at hardware store. Those some of them come in the kind of reddish, or you can see some come in black. Although we have other ones too, but for the, today's demonstration, these side wires we'll be using. And also, I have in front of me here beads. Some of the wire works that, that you'll be doing, we have some wire work you can do without enhancing with bead, and we have some that you can enhance it with bead. Depends how you want it. I have different beads here. The first one I show you here is yellow, and this is red, and this is green. Then the, you could choose what you want to use. And here again, we have the hearing hook inside this place. Now we have the, have the hearing hook and um, also we have the clasps which you can use to join your necklace. And the different hearing hook here are gold. The hearing hook and then we have the gold. And I also I have the silver and also I have some other pin here that we're going to be using for this demonstration. Now, I'm going to start. And um, let me remind you that uh, most of the copper wires come in gates. We have gate 16, we have 20, we have 24, depending on the gauges you're using. But the gauge we'll be using here today, I have these 28 and 32 in front of me. Now, and, uh, let me cut some wires now and do some little demonstration. So the first wire I cut here, and uh, let's see. Depending, you, you don't need to measure the wire, just cut at least a little length that you want to make use of because it's not going to be wasted. Now, the first one I'm gonna do here now, using the one of the instruments. I use this instrument. These are the calling gizmo instrument. Anyway, then the first thing you're gonna do, turn it around. You turn it around the two. You can see what I did here. Just turn it around the two. Once you did that, the purpose of you doing this is to hold the wire down when you started turning it so that the wire won't move. Then you take the other instrument and then put in this inside. Then you hold on to your wire. Once you hold on to your wire, let me show you from properly. You hold on to your wire this way. Make sure your thumb and the other two fingers are holding long to the wire. Then it, now you now start turning. You go slow. And make sure when you're turning, and once you're turning the wire, do not 
let the wire overlap. It, and if the wire overlaps, you can draw a wind it and then turn it back to the proper position. And sometimes you might have a situation whereby the wire is spread. Let me uh, let me uh, let me just demonstrate the way it's spread. Now I'm going to show you now the way it's spread. Now you can see that there is a gap in between. Never mind. You can easily close up the gap by pushing by pushing the two and compress it with the other long wire. See that? Then the, just keep going. Now I'm going to roll up up to like um, four, four inches to five inches, depending the length of the wire. Then the, for this one now that I'll be doing, Okay, I think um, I have about um, three, one, two. Okay, let me say two inches now. Now, a quick airing, making an airing. Imagine you just, uh, you want to go for an outing and you're looking for airing, you know, you can find your airing. Once you have these two with you, you can easily just do something quickly. And I'm gonna do, okay, you use the cutting plier cut it off. The first thing I did, I cut it off from the from the two. And then the next thing I did is to cut some other edge off. And then you have a very fine edge for the two. Now you can see what I did here. Now to make an airing, a very simple airing, I will do maybe like two, three airing of different type. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is this. Then I cut the wire into two equal parts. Fine, if you're cutting the wire in the, in the coiled wire, and then just use the eye to gauge it. And then if you, and then the, if one is longer than each other, you can easily trim it off. Like uh, chopping the edge, or chop the edge off a little, and make sure the two are equal. Let's see this all. Yeah. That's how the two wires. But, uh, let, me, uh, let me put it against the white, white background, so that I can see it properly. Where are the two? Now, the next stage I'm going to be do that I will do now is a very simple, within, the, within less than one minute. For two minutes, you've done a beautiful hearing. What I'll do now is uh, get another wire, another gauge of wire. Then what you do now, now the next thing I do, take another instrument, take another instrument, what they call in gizmo. Then what I do here, do repeat the same thing by turning your wire against the tool. So once you do that, then you hold on the wire firmly and then the put and put inside. Do the same rolling. Roll up your tool, roll up the wire, right? And then what I'll do now is the first one that I roll, then I put it inside. Into the, into, into the one I'm trying to roll up now. You can see the way I put it in. And check it out. And see that? Then I put this one in. Now, what I want to do now is to roll up the foxed um, coil to roll it up together with the second one. And make sure if you want to do that, hold Make sure, and, and if you want to do that, hold up the the first wire that you and that when you're coiling, so that it will allow the other gizmo coil 
to go on the two just slightly like this. See that. Now, because I'll be making two um, pairs of earrings, so I don't need to cut this. So all what I need to do is to pull the second one in. Then the, you can push back and make sure everything is firm. Then what I'll do here now, then I'll pull the second one in into the string. Then I keep rolling. I roll it, hold it firm. Make sure it's not moving. When you use your um, your thumb to hold the other coil, and make sure it's firm so that you could climb up, climb up to the third. Then this is it. Now what I did now, I make sure that I have the same length with this other one. I think um, by the time I cut it off, you will, you will understand what I'm, what I'm talking about. Then the, the next thing to do is to cut it, remove it from the, from the tool and cut it off from this place so that it, you can release, you can release the one you called already and then cut this one off. Yes. Then cut the other one off. And we have two here. Then what you do is to divide it into two equal parts from each side. Then I put it inside here and I cut it off. Then you can see now I have two, two pairs. Now that's not finished yet then just remaining a little thing for us to do. And the first, and then the next thing you're gonna do is take your nose plier, take your nose plier, then lift up one of the coil, one single coil one from this. Yeah, you can use a finger to hold it up and make sure that it's properly hold. And this is what I'm talking about. Okay, let me use a nose plier. I think this one was going to end. See that? Then it give you um, a kind of hook. It give you a hook. This is it. Then I repeat the same thing with this. I repeat the same thing with this one. I use my finger to leave it off small. Okay. Lift it up, then I do I repeat the same thing. Then you can see the two. Now you can see the two having hook on it. The hook is to pull the hearing hook. Mm -hmm. See it now. Now the next thing I'm going to do now. The next thing I will do now is to um. Sorry, let me wear my glasses so that I can see design properly. Now here I have two, um, I have two uh, inherent hook. I have the gold and the silver. So I'll be using the gold and uh, what you do now, from the one you just lift up from the coil, what you do is just lift it up a little and create a gap where you can put the hook. Then once you put the hook, you can see that I lift it up, then I put it in, then close it back gently. Close it back gently. Yeah. Then you have a finished earring. So do the, repeat the same thing with the second one. Open it and put it inside and close it back gently. Then you can see that in less than the, less than how many minutes now, you have 
we have two pairs of earrings. Let me put it down on the white for you to see there. You can see the very beautiful earring. Now, the next thing I'm going to do now, how can you incorporate um, bead into your earring? Then what I'll do now, get another string of copper wire. Yeah, this time around, I use um, one of the smallest calling tool. And the light gauge of wire. I repeat the same thing. I repeat the same thing here. There are different ways in which you can incorporate your bead. Now, what I'm going to do now is when I roll up the wire onto the tool, you can see so down then, then I roll into the wire, then I'm going to string up some bead into it, and then, then it will allow the, and this is the bead I'm going to use now. Yeah, the lights on. Um, light green, then I string my bead into it. You can see the way I'm stringing the bead into it. Now, depending on the number you want, you can do that gently. Yes, I mean, you have been, uh, I think I have about five or six. Yeah, thanks. I can still put more. Yes. And here now, I have about um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have twelve in here. Yeah, you can make it um, shorter than that if you want. Then hold on to your bead, make sure that the bead didn't fall out of the string. Then put your, put your string inside and repeat the same thing that I did by rolling up. So the first thing to do, make sure that have some gap, roll up some wire first out with a little inch. Then hold on to your bead. Hold your bead, hold on to your bead, make sure you hold it firm and then you roll. Once you hold it firm, it allows the bead to climb onto the tool easily without uh, any stress. And uh, make sure everything go right, see that? Then the, I move by giving another gap, make sure you have another gap so that by the time you string up the next one, you have an equal uh, equal length. Now what I'll do here, then the first bit I put here was 12. Then I'm, I'm gonna repeat the same thing by putting 12. Then this are uh, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve. That is it. So I have another twelve bead in here. Now let me hold it up. Okay. put it in then I have another 12 here. Then what I do here now, I hold the bit fair into the two, making sure there's no gap in between here. Then I roll, 
I roll it up to the toe, then you climb gently, rolling, and you keep moving. You keep moving, then I keep moving. You keep moving like that. Then I'm going to stop at this stage. Then we have another. Then the, the first thing, next thing I do now, I cut it off from the two so that to release the design I've done. Then I cut it off from here. Then the next thing, cut it off here. Then I have this. Now I'll divide this into two equal parts by cutting, using the plier to cut it off from here. Then I have two B, two pairs of earring here. And the same method could be used. You can do, and you can repeat the same method by doing as much as you can do and started joining them to make a necklace. So, but, but for today, let me quickly, I'm just quickly demonstrating how you could get a simple earring from this. Then I have two pairs of earrings here. These are the two pairs of earrings that I have here. Now I'm gonna use another method now called an add up or enhance the beauty of, um, of the work. Then I have some pins here. I have some pins here that I've, uh, look at the pins that are already been carved with the um, round nose plier. And what I'll do now is to put, for the inside each one of them, or better still, I think uh, I need to add up another bit into it. Now, what I'll do here is this. Let me add up on yellow bead into it. I can put, I can decide to put one or two. Then I put two. Then the next thing I do, then I put in the design. And already, even though before I wouldn't do the finishing, you can see the beauty of it. Then the, at the end here, I can decide to put another bead here, one or two. I think, uh, yeah, it can take out up to two. Yeah, I do that here. Once I do that, you can see that you have this. Then the, I close it up with a round nose plier. Just make a hook, a round hook, turn it, hold, hold the tip with the round nose plier, hold it firm, you can see that, and then turn it gently by, see, turn it round. Once you turn it round, and then use your finger to hold the back turn it back and then close it back. Then you have, you have the proper hook now. So this allow the, this allow the bead to stay in to the design. You see that now, you can adjust that, see? Now I'm gonna repeat the same thing with the second one. Then I have the pin. The first thing I do is to put two yellow beads. Then I put in the design, what I've made before, and then put another two yellow beads. Put another two yellow bead, then then close it top. Do the same thing, hold the edge, turn it, move it back and close it firmly. This is uh, this is good. Then I have two pairs of another earring. You can see the two pairs of another hair and earring. Now with this method that I just demonstrated, you can decide to make it as an earring, or you can decide to make it as a necklace. If you want to make it as, an, as a necklace, 
all, all what you need to do is to repeat the same thing severally, repeat the same thing severally, and, uh, and the hook that you've created on each one of them, it will allow you to join each one of them together and you have a long string. But um, for this one now, I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use it as an end um, airing. So what I'll do now, this time around, I'm going to use the silver hook, the silver hook earring. I'll use the silver hook earring to do the finishing. And this is, this is a silver hook screen. And I said, open the hook a little, just, you just lift it up a little, put the, put the hook, that's the hearing hook, and close it back so that it will, so that the hook won't comes out. Okay, you can use the, okay, didn't slip here. Okay, close back. Make sure it's properly closed. Make sure it's properly closed. Think, okay, I think I need, to, I need to use this hook. Got this one. Okay, I think it's closed. Now. Yeah, that's good. And you see, we have the uh, we have the earring. I'll do the second piece. The second piece. I can decide. Let me open the hook here because. Uh, I discovered that that uh, hook from the from the design is a little bit tiny. So and I open from this one now. Let me put on the plier now. And I put it back. Then I close I close it firmly, and uh, we have another two pairs of earring. You can see how simple it is. See now, there are two pairs of earrings. Now, several design will be made depending on your choice. You can use a wire alone. You can enhance it with bead. You can do anything you want as far as you're using the coiling gizmo and um, those are did. Now, the next step I will be demonstrating here. I will do a very simple necklace, very simple one. I mean simple, when I say simple, when I say simple, I mean uh, simple. Then the, what I'll do now is I have a wire. This is gauge, uh, yeah, this wire, it should be, uh, this is gauge 30 wire. Then I repeat the same thing I do the same thing here. Went to the turn in the same thing. The way you do this, turn it on the two. Make sure that it's firm, and then the, you put put it into the calling the other instruments that will allow you to move freely. Yeah, let me put this one I've done, let me put it aside so that it will allow us to do other ones. Then I roll up my wire, same thing. So roll it off gently. Make sure the wire did not overlap. And if the wire overlap, you can untwine it and roll it back. Just go on gently. This time I'm going to roll it pretty long to be a little bit longer.
it is pretty long run, yes. I roll everything to finish now. And what I did to make sure that everything closed, then I use my the cutting flyer, cut it off from the and you remove this. Then I have this now. Now I'll repeat the same thing so that it can allow me to do some. Uh, then I cut off from there, then I get more, I think I need more. Uh, I need more of my copper wire. This time around, I'm gonna make it longer. Yes. I want to make a quick necklace. Don't mind me if I'm too fast, but I think I just want to make sure that uh, everything is done. Then I repeat the same thing by turning. I think this time around, I believe um, you must have gotten the technique of holding up your wire with the two and then rolling it up, or calling it up to, to the toe. Then I might, I might a little bit um, make it fast so that we could be able to achieve, uh, to make a necklace of this, I think, and by the time, and at the beginning, it might be, it might take you a kind of um, 30 minutes, but by the time you master it, I think within less than the, 15 minutes or less, maybe less than 15 minutes or 10, around about, and you'll be able to finish up a good necklace. Yeah. Turn it up. This is pretty long. I make it as long as you want. Find, if you're finding it then uncomfortable for you to go as long, then you can cut it. You can cut it and start another one again. Yeah. There is time I can easily, uh, I can do another one in which um, We'll be able to incorporate some beads into it. Yeah, this is long. Okay. Then I cut it off from the two. Then remove. Then cut it off from here. So, what I'll do here, now I'll mix some the Cut it up into small pieces of the same size. Make sure they are, they are equal. Or you can use the other one to measure and you have several like that. Cut the same thing. If you're cutting it, you don't need to use a finger to spread the wire. But once you put the plier in between, you chop it off. See that it's very, very easy to cut. Very easy. Then I have another one now. Then, then cut out the last one. Cut out the last one here. Yeah, I think the last one. Oh, oh, they're the same. Okay. I chop up this place easily. Make sure, make sure there's no sharp edge. Then I have uh, about one, two, three, four, five. I have five. Then the, I have another one here. With this one, now I think uh, I'll be able to produce a simple necklace with this. See that now. Okay, I have um, I have about uh, 
seven here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's good. Man, I have eight piece. The one I just roll up now. Now the next stage, what I'm going to do now, get another gauge of wire that is a little bit that is a little bit stronger from the Fox one. Where's the edge of this wire? Okay, I can find it now. That's good. Then cut it off. Yeah, I'll be rolling up the wire on top the other coil one to make a, a design in between. And repeat the same thing, this, then that. You can decide to use any of the tools here, but I think uh, uh, I like the smaller tools and you make a, make things work fine. Because of time, I will just do some demonstration here. Then I put in, I put in my wire. Let it go down to the string. I appear the same thing here. Hold it firm, turn it over. Then over this. Then I repeat the same thing, putting another one. Putting another one. Let it go down to let it go down and roll it and roll on it. Make sure when you're rolling, give gap in between because we're still going to cut off all those gaps. Repeat the same thing till you're finished. the same thing. I think once I, uh, once I put the next one now, I'm going to cut it off for me to, for me to show you a simple sample of what I'm trying to explain here. Then I roll this one now. Then what you do, you repeat the same thing as much as possible for you to get a length of a necklace. But if you get, by this rolling, you won't get the whole length at, um, at a time, but you need to do that as many times. Then I cut up this now. Now you can see what I have here. What I, what I have here could be I show you one simple technique now. Now what what I have here, you could leave it this way and put in and put in your wire. Just pass it wire all through all through this way and then it's formed it's from um, your necklace. You can see this way. On this way, would mean this serve as a pendant. And then another thing you can do again, you can enhance it with bead. Let me quickly show you. Let me show you how you can enhance it with bead. Okay, this time I think I, I should use the green bead. I use the green bead, I put the bead here. The bead, you can see how beautiful it's coming now. You can see that. Then I do the same thing at this side. Make sure the number of beads you put there, 
could be, it should be the same thing. I put in here, how many here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I put another seven. This is seven and you can see how. Now for this technique now, you can decide you can decide to string it all over. When I mean string, it, you can string the bead all over. And then you have, uh, okay, this is this here. You have it all over. This is just one of the techniques that you can use to um, enhance, or, or you can use to make your, Necklace. At the end here, I give it a curve here, run it over. And uh, the next one here, I do here. So I do the same thing here. I turn in it. And I put the hook together, you can close it. And if you have your jump print, you can use your jump print to do the finishing, which is it here, that is it. This is a very simple, a very, very simple, quick, a very simple and quick necklace that you can do for yourself. And we have several techniques which we can use to do the calling gizmo. Another technique that we could use to do the calling gizmo. Yeah, as, as I said, I'll be demonstrating so many techniques that you can use to do your calling gizmo. And you can see that. Now, I'll be using another um, tick. I think this time around, I'm going to use the tick meter to do, to do this one. I put it inside the string, roll it up, the same thing by giving it a little gap. See that? Then the, I put in a string in some of the cuts what I've done, I put it this way, hold it firm and roll it on it, see that. Wow, this is pretty. Then do the same thing. It is same thing. You repeat the same thing on and on and on. So you have um, as much as you want, or as much as the one that can make, that can produce a necklace. Then see that. Do the same thing again. And roll it up. Okay. Now, if you're, if you're doing the necklace, though I'm gonna show you another technique which you, can, uh, which you can use to produce your necklace. Then this time around, I'm not gonna be doing it the way I did the first one. I open it up, cut this out into smaller piece.
cut it out into smaller piece. Make sure the lengths are equal with each other. There's no one is bigger than one. Yeah. You can see that. You can see how I cut it. They are pretty equal. Then I do this one too to be equal with this one. I'll do the same thing here. Then you can see here now, I have about four pieces of this. Now with this four piece I have, I'll create some jump print with, uh, with another tool so that it could allow me to get, um, to, to allow me to do, to create, a gap in between and also join them together. So what I do here, get another gauge of wire quickly, then I roll it off this time around. This is it. This is it. Oh, that, that's the same thing we do. We roll it off. This is pretty thick. Yeah, that's good. Cut it off this way. Then I have this for me. Now, what I want to do now to create some jump print, then what I'll do is to cut from one side and cut it off. I have pieces of different jump print. I do the same thing. And I cut the last one. Wow, that's a school. Then I have several jump prints here. You can see them here. Now, what I want to do now is start joining them together. So I create a hook from each of the coiled one I have created. Let me use a nose plier to be a little bit faster. And I create the hook. By lifting this up, you can see that then I close it from here. Just close it up from here and take one of the jump prints, slide, slide it in. Maybe, okay. Okay, let me just open it a little so that it can go in. Okay, let's go. Cool. Goes in and close it back. Make sure you have your finger steady with it. You can see this is okay. This is it. Close it back. See that. Then I have this. Then the next stage again, I repeat the same thing that I do here. I use my finger to open it up, lift it up, and create a hook. You can see the way I create the hook, the jump print. Jump, okay. Okay, okay. Again, flatten it up, put the hook inside. And close it back. You can see this down. Now, what I'm going to do now is uh, open out another jump print, put the two inside, depending how you want to do your design. Put this one to inside. Never mind, I'm gonna show you once it get inside now. Okay, yeah, goes in. Then I close this one. Make sure it's properly closed. You can use the two pliers if you want. Well, let me see. 
Okay, it's closed. How I will join this. So you repeat the same thing on and on and on and on till you get the length of the necklace. You repeat the same thing on and on till you get the neck, uh, the length of the necklace. Now with this now, I believe that every, I believe that everyone of us have gotten the idea of, um, of making and your earring and necklace with coiling gizmo. Now what you do, you can see that I'm repeating the same thing I do. Just keep repeating the same thing on and on to get the length of what you want. Even though with this one now, if you wish, you can turn it to an earring. With this, if you wish, you can turn it to an earring. And, and if you wish, you can make it longer than this, which is going to serve as a necklace. And uh, in some, uh, in some instant you want to make or, or you want to enhance the beauty of the wire work, then you could add up bead into it. Just choose any color of the bead you want, then uh, you could do that. You can see the two necklaces, sorry, and the two earring we made. This is the two earring. And also you can see um, how a necklace could be achieved in a simple, how, and how a necklace could be achieved in a simple manner. Yeah, all you need to do, just keep repeating the same thing to you get the length of your necklace. And uh, if you want to, as I said, you want to enhance it, you can put bead. And also we have some colored um, copper wires. We have some colored one, you have blue, you have yellow, you have gold, you have a green and different ones. You can use them to achieve all, all these method of um, wire work. And thank you very much. And I'd, I really appreciate, I, I appreciate everyone of you and I hope you enjoy the class. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Alo. I'm certain that they enjoyed your presentation. I mean, it was precise and on point as usual. And please forgive me about the name, you know, that can be a tongue twister sometimes. In any event, um, ladies and gentlemen, just want to point out that some of the necklaces that I have worn before um, in previous webinars, they're actually a Lowe's design. So he's actually, as I mentioned before, a very talented artist. I don't know why I'm not wearing one today, but I guess that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. But um, yes, he's very talented and exceptional at what he does. So thank you very much, Alo. Okay, if you have any yeah, questions, yeah, if you have any questions, because as I said, I know it was on point and I think you were very clear in, in what you um, actually um, mentioned and what you did. So if you have any questions, please fire away at allow. You can either type your questions in the chat or you can click on the icon indicating that you want to raise your hand and we will acknowledge you. So. Fire away at Allo if you have the questions. It's a great opportunity if you have never engaged him in person before and have an interest in the arts. Okay, so I'm seeing in the chat, Lisa Calendar said, we did enjoy the class. Thank you, Allo and JBDC. Where did you purchase that bulk copper wire, please? Sorry, I missed the beginning. This may have been said. All right, hello. I'm not sure if you will know perhaps the exact retailer, but if you know the retailer, um, you can mention it. If not, Lisa, we can definitely provide that information for you at a later 
time. So Alo, do you know where exactly the copper wire was purchased? Yes, um, and you can get uh, most of the copper wires at hardware store. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or well, um, you can get this from the hardware store or some of the electrical supply where they sell some electric um, wires and some other things like that. Actually, they are copper wires that they use to rewind uh, most of the um, motors and, uh, you know. Okay, yeah, so all right. And I'm seeing where Andrea Johnson is saying that she has purchased copper wire from Campbell's Electrical Supplies. So um, as you said, allow any electrical supplies place uh, as well as um, hardware store should be able to have them, right? Are you hearing me? Yes. Okay. All right, so Camille. Yes, yes, yes I do. Okay. Kamisha Morrison is saying, I'm not sure if you mentioned it, but where can you buy? Oh, well, I guess she was also asking about the wires as well. Okay, Janice McLeod is asking, where do we get the gizmo to buy or do we make it? And yeah, the, you can get the, the this gizmo from the Ligani Drug and Garden. And also at that place again, um, they sell some other wires that are very, they, what I mean, some other wires, not even copper wire. They, they are copper wires, but they are pretty, uh, they are kind of pretty. They, they come in gold, they come in yellow, they come in green, blue, things like that. But we, don't, uh, we just use the copper wire to do the demonstration. So we can get some other pretty wires there. And also even though combining with the um, copper wire, that we have here then just to enhance your work. Okay, and I see where Janice McLeod is saying that the copper wire is also sold at Ligani Drug and Garden as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I really like the fact though that you highlighted that you made jump rings as well from the actual copper wire. And I think it assisted in showing the flexibility and the versatility that can come about once you have a certain design in mind. You can develop different products utilizing different techniques as well as um, materials. And they look really good because um, those earrings that you did and the technique that you utilize allow, I would have thought before seeing you in action that somebody probably spent hours doing that intricate wrapping of the wire and so forth to make it um, into a final product. So, all right. Lisa Callender is asking, could we see how he closed the jump rings one more time? So Lisa is asking you to do a small demo of how you close that jump ring. Yeah. Now, by the time you cut up your jump prints, they're very easy because um, once you cut it off, it slides into um, both ways. Or what you need to do, use a plier to press it down, then it closes. Once you, once you use a plier and press it down, you, you will discover that it closes easily. But then if it didn't close and you discover that there's still a little bit gap, and then you use a plier to hold both sides and uh, just, use a finger and press it together and it closed. But pretty much, you know, when you roll it up, all what you need to do, once you slide it, once you slide it this way, once you slide it with your, uh, with a cutting plier, you, uh, you will notice that uh, it, uh, it's a little bit small, but then you will notice that each of boats where you cut slide at both ways. One go left and the other one go right. So all we need to do, use a plier and press it down and, and, and both come at the equal, and both of them come at the equal space. And then you discover that it's closed. 
Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Alo. I know somebody asked earlier where um, they could access the gizmo, and I think I had mentioned the Ghani Drug and Garden, but somebody else was also asking, Sonia Evans was asking, where do you get the equipment to buy, not the wires, the other equipment? So I don't know if you want to perhaps go over what it is that you have there and maybe where they can be accessed. Yeah, you can get them at the Ligani. I think uh, most of them, you can get them at the Ligani Drug and Jag Garden. Okay. The, yeah, the, uh, the gizmo tools. And the pliers, you can get the pliers too at a place. Yeah, and uh, some of the name of the pliers, we have the, the cutting plier, the nose plier, round nose plier, and then uh, the nose curved plier. You could get them at the Ligani Drug and Gardens. Okay. So most of, of the items that you utilize today are, I should say all of them um, can be purchased there. I am seeing where Andrea Lawrence, Andrea Johnson, sorry, has said, Sorry, it is Lawrence Electrical and they are at Waltham Park Road. I think she had referred to Campbell's Electrical Supplies earlier for the while, but um, she's saying that there is Lawrence Electrical and they are at Waltham Park Road, close to Hagley Park intersection, and they are very reasonably priced. Okay, so um, anybody else has any more questions for a law, especially as it relates to the technique? You know, it's a very good opportunity, as I mentioned before, to have a law at your disposal and um, accessible in this format. So if you have any more questions as it relates to the technique or um, the products, please fire away and um, make use of the opportunity. Okay, Andrea Johnson is saying hello. She is thanking you and she's saying she enjoyed the presentation. And, and then also, um, uh, what I wanted to add, of, uh, add to it is that uh, I wanted to tell, and if anyone again that you need um, technical support, you can come to JBDC at um, 76 Marcos Gavi. And then, yeah, Marcus Gavi Drive. And uh, you can rent the incubator for just, uh, uh, yeah, for just a token change and which uh, uh, we could assist you from any of these that you want to learn proper. Then if you want to learn proper or you want to add up to um, your product, and then if you come here and we'll be able to assist you more and guide you. Or what you need to do, just rent the incubator. You are not paying for the service. So we'll do that for you. Sure. <laughs> okay, yes, indeed. Um, Alo many times is in the craft incubator. So if you can grab him at any point where you um, would have rented the facility and he's there just to get a little advice at some point, you can seek to do that. But generally, the craft incubator is a part of um, the services that we offer at the Technical Services Department of the JBDC. And it is there to facilitate persons who have an interest in developing products, especially aligned with that industry. We have different equipments and the space that's available to assist you in doing your production. Okay, so Lisa Callender is asking us to pursue another workshop pertaining specifically to wire wrapping. And I know that that is a whole other kettle of fish or technique, right, Alo? Yeah, wire it, um, yeah, wire wrapping. Yeah, that one too is a very, um, very nice one. I think uh, maybe uh, the next uh, class that we could be doing, yeah, we could do that, do that. Well, okay, Audrey Smith is asking about um, doing a workshop on chasing and reposy. And um, that 
of course, is a more technical area, Audrey, and um, I'm not sure if we will be doing it via this medium per se, but um, it is something that we can definitely explore over time. Of course, we'll be utilizing the webinars for the more simple, um, the simple techniques at this point in time. Hello, you have anything to add? Yeah, um, pretty much. I think an other uh, workshop might be coming on. But I mean, other workshop, other, um, I think, uh, yeah, the chasing and repose. Yeah, we could do some little virtual of the, uh, of the chasing and repose, a very simple one, because the chasing and repose, it, take, it might take, or, although we might, um, split it into like three classes, maybe at the beginning, how you could view your chasing and repose and then pending, I don't know. Yeah. We can look into it. We, we yeah. will look into what we can offer. And of course it will um, be in the best possible format and platform that we can offer it. And of course, accessibility and affordability is also a consideration. So it, we will definitely look into some of the requests that um, you have mentioned here. So um, if you have any more questions, you can continue to fire away. But in the interim, as I was mentioning before, the Technical Services Department, which is here at the 76 Marcos Garvey Drive Unit 10A Garmex Free Zone, is where the incubator facility, uh, that is the craft incubator, is um, housed. And we have other incubators. We have the fashion incubator as well as the food incubator as well. And uh, all our various units from visual communications to product development to food to engineering, which offers an array of services, all aligned to assisting you to develop your product to the best possible um, way. Right. Okay, Lisa is asking about the opening hours of the incubator currently. Um, generally, we are open right now from 8.30 to 4 um, currently because you know the times can change. Okay, the notice. I. How much notice do you need before you can access the incubator? I am not 100% sure. I'd have to consult with Tanisha. I don't know if Tanisha is right there and can just provide that answer for me. But um, how much notice do they need to have for um, accessing the incubator? OK, so it depends on who has already scheduled. So what they can do is call and make an appointment. OK. Yes. All right, so the general number for the JBDC, right, the general number for the JBDC's Incubator and Resource Center is 876-758-3966-8, that's 876-758-3966-8, so you can call and seek about making an appointment to be a part of um, or utilize any of our incubator facilities and I'm being advised that generally two days notice is the best practice for that. So please go ahead and give us a call so that you can book your appointment for any of our incubator facilities. Okay, so um, if there are no more questions for allow, we can wrap up. I believe, because it was thorough. And um, I think most persons received what you had to offer um, very well allow. So next week, we will be looking at the basics of documentation and record keeping in the food industry. So please tune in to that webinar. And if you have, or if you know of anybody else that may be interested in that webinar, you can just pass on the information to them. But um, we look forward to having you here. And please don't forget that 
this webinar as well as previous webinars are accessible on our YouTube page, JBDC Jamaica. You can actually click on um, our YouTube channel, subscribe, like any of our videos, and um, pay attention to any of the information that you may have missed before, whether it was this webinar or any of the previous webinars that we have um, done for you. So please go ahead and check that out and check out any one of our social media pages on Instagram, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. And until next week, please be safe and take care of yourselves as we try to deal with COVID continuously. So hello, thank you again for an excellent presentation. And we look forward to having you here again on um, our JBDC virtual biz zone so that you can give out some of that information that you're so willing to share with everybody. So um, we really want to thank you for being here today. So thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. So until next week, everybody, um, we will see you again for another exciting webinar. So goodbye. Mm -hmm.